Hey guys, Pete here. This will be my breakdown of the Dark Trilogy trailer they just released. I've seen it with the name Trilogy and the name Franchise Trailer. Whatever you want to call it, the trailer they just put out, the third trailer for season three. The first half of it recaps the first two seasons, and then we get about a minute of new footage. The whole thing is great, but I'm just going to focus on the new stuff in this video. Before we get into it, this is your spoiler warning. This video will discuss everything that's happened in Dark through the first two seasons. I'll talk about the things we've seen in all the season three trailers and promo material so far. A few days ago, Netflix released a ton of press photos that I haven't had a chance to talk about yet. They're mostly from the first two episodes, and I'll discuss them when they add context to some of the things we see in this trailer. If any of that doesn't sound like your cup of tea, now's your chance to leave. As mentioned, the first half of the trailer shows us how we got to where we are at the beginning of Season 3. The one thing that stands out at the end is that we see how alt Marta's journey is very similar to Jonas's. Right after we see Marta save Jonas from the apocalypse at the end of Season 2, the trailer cuts to the alt-world version of the Conwald house. We notice the background is reversed to help distinguish which world we're looking at. There's a shot of Jonas looking at something in the alt-world. It's kind of funny since the thing that looks different about him is that his hair is just parted on the other side. Next, we see Marta talking to Jonas in the cave. I mentioned in one of my recent videos how this Marta, the one with the shorter hair and dark clothes, is at least slightly older than the one we see in the yellow raincoat. Think of the Jonas in the yellow raincoat we meet at the beginning, compared to the one in darker clothes who has traveled and has the scar on his neck. So these two are in the cave, and there are a couple clearer photos of them in the promo pics. Those are labeled episode one, and in them we see Marta traveling. My guess is that this version of Marta has brought Jonas to the alt world at some point before the apocalypse happens there. And in this scene, she's leaving him. This means that he can go meet the one who wears the raincoat and most likely explain some things about time travel to her. The next shot is the burning of Michael's suicide note, which looks like recycled footage from season one. That cuts to the trio watching Adam's lair burn. There's a couple of images of this in the press photos, which are labeled episode one as well. If that's correct, we won't have to wait long to see what they're up to. As it burns, we hear a voiceover of a woman's voice saying, everything will fall apart in this world and yours. As she's saying that, we see Raincoat Marta riding her bike, much like Jonas did at the beginning of season one. After that, we see the power plant with three people in radiation suits standing in front of where the god particle was. I say where it was because now there's just a hovering white glowing ball rather than the black blob. The shot is too far away to say who's standing there, but we did see older Elizabeth and Charlotte wearing yellow radiation suits in the last trailer. The very next scene looks like original Charlotte in the 2053 timeline, which makes her a good candidate. There's a transition shot of Jonas walking away from the cave. We see it's the alt world because of the red and white tape instead of blue and white. Then we get a scene with Hannah, where we see her wearing the St. Christopher pendant for the first time. Most of us knew this was coming, but it still turned out to be a scene to make you gasp, because we see Aegon behind her, clasping it on her neck. If there was any doubt these two would start a relationship, we can put those to rest. This is the first of two big revelations from this trailer. There aren't any photos of the 1950s timeline at all besides the behind the scenes ones that BBO posted on his Instagram. So this is exciting to see. Next, we see Adam in the power plant in the 2050s timeline. The black blob is still there. So if we put two and two together, it looks like whatever he's doing here will result in the change we saw in it earlier. We've seen a few sequences in previous trailers that make it look like this is all part of whatever he has planned. There's a sequence of recycled images of the notebook, Noah, young Helga in the operational version of the chair, and some shots of the future that might be new or those could be recycled as well. After that, there's an interesting shot of the actor who plays middle Claudia. Someone is holding the orb time machine, setting it to travel. Claudia looks somewhat dirty and her hair is different, but I don't know if you can tell for sure if this is alt Claudia or if she just looks like that from being in the bunker after the apocalypse. This reminded me of the shot in the first trailer where we saw Claudia traveling, and now I'm wondering if this is alt Claudia traveling in front of her prime world version. They look like they could be happening 
everything in the same place. So let me know what you think about this in the comments. We know at some time Claudia travels to the alt world and there's no reason to believe that there wouldn't be an alt version of her. So we could see them getting together right here. Next we see Raincoat Marta kiss Jonas in front of the cave. That cuts to a couple having sex in the Conwald house based on the paneling on the walls. You can't tell for sure who this is or which world, but it seems pretty likely that it's Jonas and Alt Marta in her world. There's a quick shot of older Alt Helga sitting in a chair. It's short and it doesn't look different than when we saw him in previous trailers. Then we see Jonas holding the St. Christopher pendant briefly, possibly in the cave. This mirror is a shot we saw earlier of Marta holding it from season two. That cuts the stranger Jonas in the distant past timeline with tears in his eyes. There was a wider version of this in the promo photos where you can see that Marta is standing in front of him. This is where I think Alt Marta goes after she leaves Jonas in the cave since this all seems to be from the first episode. This is most likely 1888 or sometime not too long after that and it is probably connected to the other shot we saw of Sigmundus building the time machine with Alt Marta looking on. After that, there's some recycled shots of Mikkel's disappearance showing Jonas and Ulrich running through the woods. Then there is a quick shot of lights flickering in the alt world school. You can see the doors are a darker color and this is where the press photo of alt Hannah that's out there is from. The flickering light shot cuts to Hannah and Aegon back in the 50s and she doesn't look pleased. It's a quick look and the big takeaway seems to be that things are going sour between them. Then we get the other big reveal from this trailer. We see two people touching hands across the chessboard. We can tell by the pattern on the sweatshirt that this is Katarina on the right, and it looks like she will be reunited with Ulrich. Based on this shot, we can confirm that he's wearing the same sweater, and you can even see the chessboard. I think it's great that these two will have a scene together, and it'll be interesting since he's 33 years older than the last time she saw him. Katarina was pretty well confirmed to have traveled back to 86 in the prime world and this shot appears to seal the deal. It also adds fuel to the fire of what we expect to go down between her and her mother Helene Albers. We know she works here so it looks like they may be crossing paths not long after this reunion. After that, there's another really interesting shot of a book being closed on a desk. There's a pen beside it, and the clothing seems to be a match for what we see the trio wearing. According to Reddit, the words on the page are from the play Ariadne that we saw Martha perform in season one. A book of the play showed up in the last trailer, and there are a couple of promo photos showing that she performs the play in the alt world as well. The other interesting thing here is the illustration at the top of the page. We see a circle that is half blacked out with the letter A below it. This looks very similar to the illustration in the book that Elizabeth found in Tannhaus's shop. In that, there are two globes on either side of one in the center. There's a male and a female character blowing on each of them, and there's a theory that they're Adam and Eve. The globes refer to both Windens we know of, and they're connected to a prime world that we're yet to see. I think seeing this has me thinking about it more, and you can't deny that when Elizabeth looks at the book, the camera lingers in a way that makes it feel like it's important, like we're supposed to notice it. Next, we have the shot of Alt Marta with the bloody hand standing at the mouth of the cave. We have no idea whose blood this is, but it does look like this is where the mark on her cheek comes from. It's also probably where she ditches the raincoat since it's completely covered with blood here. Then we see her wake up from a nightmare like we've seen Jonas and Stranger do many times before. She does this twice and it mirrors the beginning of the trailer where we see Jonas and Stranger both wake up. The first time we see Marta, I think it's the prime version since she doesn't have bangs. The second time, it's definitely the alt world since she's sleeping in the Conwald house and she has the longer hair like she does when she's wearing the raincoat. After that, we see the alt world gang in front of the cave. From left to right, it's the new character Killian, Bartaj, Magnus, Franziska, and Marta. We see them turn and look towards the cave, and then their flashlights start to flicker. In one of the promo pics, we see Killian and Marta holding hands at the school, and it looks like he's her boyfriend. In that, we can see a missing poster for Eric Obendorf hanging on the wall. It looks exactly like the one in Prime World. We don't know any details about that yet, but that's probably why they're searching around in the woods at night.
Then there's a shot of Marta in the woods that mirrors the one of Jonas after getting separated from Mikkel. There's a shot of Michael's suicide note in the box, followed by some reverse shots of the bloody rock, the police arriving at the bridge, and then Marta kissing Jonas again. That cuts to the last shot of the trailer of Raincoat Marta turning to look back in front of the cave. This is where the world looks like a desert, which I think is in the far future, probably 2086 or beyond. So it's another great trailer. The two big reveals are seeing Hannah and Aegon together. This doesn't look like a fling. This looks like they're having a relationship. We have the origin of the St. Christopher pendant confirmed, and that definitely makes you think about how it ended up on the beach where Jonas and Marta will find it many years later. This makes the Lady in the Lake theory seem even more probable, and I've never really jumped on the bandwagon of Hannah having another child. I thought they definitely hinted in season two that these two might hook up, but seeing the way this is presented here, I wouldn't put anything past them. Seeing Katarina with Ulrich is fantastic, and there's just so much tragedy when you think about the fact that she's probably going to end up on the wrong end of a rock that's wielded by her own mother. Just a tough situation all the way around. There's a lot to think about here. I'll probably follow this up with another theory video in a couple of days, just like I did with the last couple of trailers. I think I'll end this one here. Make sure to tell me what you think about this trailer, about everything else that's going on what you're hoping to see, how are your theories shifting, are you changing your mind about what you think is going to happen at the end of the series. We only have eight more days to go, so make sure you like this video if you enjoyed it. Please subscribe to my channel, give me a follow on Twitter or Instagram if you haven't already, and thanks for watching. I'll talk to you soon.